Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I will be predicting the main card fights for UFC 230, Cormier versus Lewis. And this card has had a plenty of shakeups on it, like fights falling out, fighters getting injured, this fight getting off, and this fight being negotiated, then falling apart or moved to another event. But it's looking like the card is finally situated, though I think some of these fights may shift around a bit. I think for the most part, this will be the main card, maybe just not in this order. So I'm going to predict this fight, predict these fights, and if anything changes, I'll update it in the comments section, or maybe I'll update it in the description. But let's just get to the prediction. Let's get it started. So in our first fight, we have in the middleweight division, Derek Brunson versus Israel Adesanya. So Derek Brunson, you know what he brings. He's um been a top 10 middleweight for a long, like, long period of time. He's fought all of the best, literally like pretty much all the best for Anderson Silva, Jacare, Robert Whitaker. Pretty much he fought just about everybody you can name outside of maybe... Chris Weidman and Luke Rockwood. He even fought Yo Romero, almost beat him, but they got finished in the last round. So he's fought just about everybody that is anybody in the division. And he's maintained, been in the top 10. He's been destroying everybody that's not the, like, you know, the cream of the crop. But when he gets to that cream of the crop that could get him to a title shot or advance him up the division, he, he falls short in those fights. But solid fighter, got impressive power in his hands, good wrestling, good cardio, good pace. His, though his striking is kind of awkward, that's about it. But he has solid wrestling, solid cardio. And he has that wrestler's pace and he has that power in his hands. That's pretty much the tape on him. You got Israel Asanya, who's the new blood in the UFC's middleweight division. I think with 3 0 in the UFC's middleweight division, 3 0 in the UFC. Kind of got that John Jones kind of presence a little bit. He's not really a wrestler, he's a striker. Come from K1 and Glory and all that stuff. He's a striker. Has next level striker, one of the best strikers in the UFC, period, regardless of division. I'll say top five easily, regardless of division. That's how good his striking is, in my opinion. And, um, yeah, so his first fight, we didn't really get to see too much of him. I mean, we just got to see much of him. But really, you kind of just erase those first two fights. They were kind of like the button fights. But then his third fight against Brad Tavares, who was looking the best he ever looked. He made Brad Tavares, who was the best fighter he had ever fought, look like the worst fighter he had ever fought in his UFC fights. He just was defending most of the takedowns, just piecing Brad Tavares up and making like a, every round look like a highlight reel. He was just on the next level, on a different speed. Matter of fact, he was like two, three or four different gears faster than Brad Tavares and was just pretty much make him look bad in that fight. Almost finished several times, was drawing him around, was doing whatever he wanted with him. I think the only thing Brad DeVars really did was land like one takedown, maybe land like four strikes. Other than that, he was getting pieced up. And I think that's kind of going to be the tell of this fight. I think, I mean, it's not going to be like that. I think Derek Brunson going to be definitely gonna be aggressive. That's how he is. And he, when he gets frustrated, he's going to try to make something happen and stuff. And I think as far as his wrestling goes, when the way that Ezra out of sign strikes, it's going to really have Derek Brunson shoot it from far out unless he makes it ugly. I think. Derrick Brunson is going to need to make this fight kind of ugly. He can't just be trying to strike from the outside with Israel Adesanya. He's going to get pieced up. He can't try to rest, shoot shots from far out because Israel Adesanya has shown to be able to defend takedowns unless you really set them up and get into his face and make it kind of ugly. If you're just trying to shoot from far out, he'll defend those, especially like in the Brad DeVars fight. You got to make it look, you got to really get it, make it ugly to get those takedowns. And that's, he's going to have to make it ugly. That's what's going to have to, have to happen. I think when he makes it ugly, he leaves openings, but I don't think he'll get caught necessarily the first time he does it. I think he's going to have some success there. But I think Israel Sanz going to be able to shuck off most of that aggression, eventually start to find his range, and just piece up Derek Brunson. I think by the second round, he's going to already kind of tag him up in the first. Then in the second round, he's going to find that mark. And I see Israel Adesanya stopping Derek Brunson in the second round. So in this fight, I have Israel Adesanya via second round TKL. Then on to our next fight, we have in the middleweight division, Carl Roberson versus Jack Marshman. So in this fight, I see two fighters who are very similar. Um, except Jack Marshman has like much more experience, but I think Carl Roberson is the... Robertson is the better fighter. Carl Robertson's last fight was his only loss. He lost to Cesar Muchanchi. Jack Marshman lost a couple times. He won like 27 times. He's had a lot of fight, a lot of fights. But he also lost to Cesar Muchanchi. They both lost via arm triangle. Marshman lasted a little bit longer, but just because you last longer against somebody don't mean that you're better. Because as we all know, even if somebody beats somebody, they can lose to somebody. But yeah, we're not going to get all into MMA math. It will go forever. But I feel like Carl Robertson, he's, he's the taller fighter, the longer fighter. He's the better striker. I think significantly better striker. They both can get things done on the ground or on the feet. But I feel like um, Carl Robinson just better on the feet, much significantly better on the feet. I think Marshman might be a little bit better on the ground, but Carl Robinson is much better on the feet. I think he has the power. He has that, the, the, like, the accuracy. He knows where to put it. I think he can push the pace much more on the feet. And he, can, he has more versatility on the feet. And I think as far as like when, you, when you're that even, on, when he has an advantage on the feet and the, on the ground it's not that much difference, I feel like Carl Robinson will be able to dictate the pace of the fight. So even Markman's a little bit better on the ground, Carl Robinson's going to be able to hurt him on the feet and make him kind of not, not really be all there when he's trying to grapple. Like he's going to be trying to go get desperate for these shots and these take down the attempts and try to force some type of grappling exchange or make it ugly. And that's just going, not going to work out for him. I just see him 
trying to get too aggressive with what he's doing. Once he's getting peace up on the feet, and I see him getting submitted. So in this fight, I have Carl Robertson via first round submission. Then on to our next fight, we have in the middleweight division, Der- David Branch versus Jared Cannonier. So Der- David Branch was originally supposed to fight Jacare. I think um, Jared Cannonier is dropping down from light heavyweight, came in at heavyweight, dropped down to light heavyweight. Now he's coming down to middleweight. But I think he's jumping in the pool a little too deep. He's going to come in. He's going to be the... Be, I mean, Derrick Branch can be better than him everywhere. I think only thing that Derrick Cannonier could hope for is maybe landing a big shot. But David Branch boxing is pretty solid. I think David Branch will box him up, keep him from distance. It's not like the first time David Branch fought somebody that's going to be like big, for like kind of a wide frame that has like power. And like in that last fight, he was able to jab that guy. But I'm not saying that his last fight, one of his previous fights, I've seen him fight somebody that's like, you know, like bring the similar type of stuff that Derrick Cannon will bring. I mean, Derrick Cannon might be better than that guy, but Derrick Branch is not going to be unfamiliar to him. He's going to be able to use his boxing, keep him at range. He will be the better striker. He'll be the better wrestler. He'll be the better submission artist. He'll pretty much be better everywhere except, like I say, Jerry Cannon is going to be relying on one big shot and that's just really not enough to kind of lean towards Jerry Cannon just trying to lose that big, that um power or just try and land that big shot. And Dave Branch is going to be aware of it and if he needs to, he'll take it to the ground and have his way there. If it's on the feet, he'll just be tagging him up. It really not, you know, like, Dave Branch is not going to overcommit and let himself get caught. He's going to either play it safe on the feet or just keep him at the bay with the jab and mix in and make he, sure he loses those, use those long strikes and not really give a window for Jerry Cannon there to counter. But I see this uh, basically a breakdown effect and Jerry Cannon there getting tagged up for like the first two rounds. Then in the, by the third round, he'll be worn out and I see David Branch taking to the ground and submitting him. So in this fight, I have David Branch via third round submission. Then on to our next fight, we have in our co-main event in the middleweight division, Chris Weidman versus Ronaldo Souza, or I say Jacare Souza. So an interesting matchup. I think Jacare Souza has made one significant improvement. He hasn't made like a whole rack of improvements and it's like pretty much you got kind of expect that Ben is like he's in his late thirties or what early forties. So I think late thirties not gonna really change too much. But I seen when coming for like the Derrick Brunson fight, he learned how to at least to do a basic, the most basic boxing defense, that little shell defense, little so a bit like not not even shell what's it called, but whatever case, a, a very basic boxing defense. That's what he, he kind of learned or uh, brought into the game coming into that second Brunson fight, and it kind of saved him in um, Kevin Gaston fight just by covering up. At this level of like striking as far as MMA with most people, they're not going to be going to your body, ripping to your body and coming around your guard or like breaking down the middle, one, two, one, two, and kind of dipping down, slipping up because they're not going to be doing all the type of stuff that you're going to be seeing from boxers. They're not going to be really coming around and guard too well. So you can just shell up a little bit, then find your space and get your movement, get get back out and let them kind of tire themselves out. You can survive. Like, I think that's be important for Chris Wyman because Chris Wyman, he's not like a high level striker. He does have power. He is good enough there, but he's not going to mix it up to your body, rip all that stuff. He's really going to be a kind of a headshot type of guy as far as his punches. He's not going to really go to your body. So you can just shell up like that, at least for the first couple rounds, or if you if it need be, you get got a chance there, because Chris Wyman's not going to really shell up too much, and you, like, and he's going to be open for those hooks sometime. But all in all, I'm not saying it's going to win a jock ready fight, but I'm at least going to make it a, um, what's it called, a more winnable fight for him. I, but I feel like Chris Wyman's going to win the fight, in my opinion. I think Definitely, Souza has a better opportunity to land that finishing shot because he has that, still has that power. He still has that aggression. But I think Chris Wilder will be able to shut, like pretty much defend his takedowns with you know with that wrestling pedigree. He'll be able to defend those um, takedowns. But if he doesn't run back, it's like might be all she wrote for Wyman if Souza could get on top of him. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I think Wyman will be able to defend the takedowns, make it a close enough fight on the feet. But I feel like um, Chris Wyman is just a younger fighter. He's not that. I mean, he's not like no twenty year old or nothing. But he's still like early thirties or mid thirties. He's going to be the younger fighter. He still has that wrestling cardio that Souza really doesn't have. Souza, you've seen him gassing a lot of times when stuff gets like kind of hectic. He starts to gas. And I feel like Wyman's going to be able to break him down and, and outlast him. I think that's how Wyman wins th- throughout lasting Jacare. I think Jacare might be better early, but down the stretch, Wyman's going to be have that more energy and he's going to win a very close fight where he's kind of like a decision. He's going to kind of wear Souza out. Maybe the first couple of rounds, like, I mean, like first round and maybe the half, the first half of the second round, he's going to kind of not try to grapple with um, Souza too much but then we feel like Souza kind of fatiguing he's going to try to shoot in some takedowns or at least find some ways to enforce the clinch so that he could wear on Souza and then start just like landing some ground and pound here and there land some strikes here and there or, pretty much doing whatever he can to make Souza fatigue more or, and speed up the, f- the fatigue process and just kind of ground out the decision so in this fight I think that Wyman is pretty much going to pull this one out in the third it's going to be kind of close but in the third round he's going to pull that out and win that third round and win the fight via decision so in this fight I have Chris Wyman via decision. Then on to our main event, we have in the heavyweight division, heavyweight champion, light heavyweight champion, champ champ, Daniel Cormier versus Derek Lewis. 
I say this is a pretty easy fight to predict, but it definitely can always go the other way when you're dealing with Derrick Lewis because Derrick Lewis doesn't play by the cards. He can definitely pull it out, especially when like Danny Cormier is saying that, oh, he could, he just has to wear out Derrick Lewis early. I think as far as what Danny Cormier really has to do, he, had to, he has to get Derrick Lewis out early. I mean, he doesn't have to rush a finish, but he just has to break him down and finish him. When he can finish him, finish him. Don't blow yourself out trying to finish him or TKO him or submit him, but like just work, like work through the process, wear him down, kind of break him down a little bit, then get set, then sink in the choke. Don't spend too much energy, but it's, just make it like a, a workman performance and like and f- it's like finish him when you can because you try to break him down and just lay on him and then like think in the fifth round he's not going to be able to knock you out. He's not Rumble Johnson. He's not going to get discouraged. That's how he's been winning pretty much most of his fights. He's He gets laid on the whole fight. Then like in the last couple minutes, he's knocked you out because people get last of days with like they think the fight's over and then he turns it on. He pulls out that second gear, explodes on you, hits you with a big shot and then you be out cold like it happens. It happened too many times to think that. Oh, in the fifth round, he's gonna be worn out by whatever you do. And Danny Cormier talking about how much um, it's gonna be so hard to hit him. He's gonna have to do all these different stuff. But like Danny Cormier, in pretty much every fight, he's took just about all of his opponents' best shot. Danny Cormier, it's not like you know Floyd Mayweather or no amazing or Vasily Lomachenko. He's not no amazing defense artist that's hard to hit. He took about every everybody before he took their best hit. He took like Barnett's knee to the face. He took. Goofson's uppercut. I mean, he took Goofson's knee to the face. He took Barnett and Goofson's knee to the face. He took head kicks from John Jones. He took overhands from Rumble Johnson. He took head kicks. Like, man, I mean, you're a tough dude and you're good and stuff, but it's not acting like it's so hard to hit you. You're not that hard to hit. You just have a chin on you. <laughs> but Derek, Dan Cormier is a solid fighter and, and by far the best fight Derek Lewis has ever fought. But don't get it, like, get too thinking that he can't land that shot on you. So, in the best case, enforce the wrestling when you can. Don't gash yourself out. Kind of, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm breaking down what Dan Cormier should do instead of predicting the fight. But in my opinion, like the, my real prediction for this fight is to think that Dan Cormier is going to do what he had to do. It's going to, um, Derrick Lewis will have that chance to land that big shot. I think Dan Cormier is going to be able to get inside when he needs to get inside, get these takedowns, grapple him, and probably get like a rear naked choke in. I don't think he's maybe not be in the first, but maybe like the second. First round, kind of beat him up. Then the second round, he's going to get, like just like in a Vulcan fight, I mean, it's not going to be like the Vulcan fight but as far as the... the the fact that he was able to see that, oh, I could get to the hair against this guy in the first round. So then as soon as the second round started, like, oh, I know just what to go. I could go right here, go right there. Then he just sink in the choke and just tap out Derek Lewis in the second round. So it's going to be like that. So I'm like, I feel like in the first round, be still filling our process, but still be dominant. Dan Cormier going to take him down, wrestle him, not spend too much energy, but kind of just feel for what, he, what he's going to do, what's open, what's not. And then the second round, he's going to take advantage of what he we filled out in the first round and get that submission. So in this fight, I have Daniel Cormier via second round submission. And that concludes my fight predictions for UFC 230, Cormier versus Lewis. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.